What's up, y'all? Today, I want to share with you guys one of my favorite Victor players. He is a professional player. You guys may know him as Jet or Jet7. He has recently been playing Victor, and I have absolutely loved watching him play. He's been doing some really creative things and showing some really good fundamentals, which I want to share with you guys in this video today. We're going to talk about starting Monte Crystal to be able to get Lost Chapter at a really early wave state. We're going to talk about how to play with minions, how to trade as control mages, and we're going to use this game as an example of kind of what the perfect Victor game looks like. So before we get started, I want to talk about starting uh, Monte Crystal. You can see uh, Sapphire Crystal jet here is starting with it and what this does is with the lost chapter change lost chapter costs 1100 gold now with this mono crystal start it allows you to back on wave five and get lost chapter at wave five which is really really early so let's talk about why that works and why it's so good so cannon minions spawn every three waves so this first wave this is wave one this is going to be a normal wave wave two it's going to be a normal wave wave three is going to be a cannon now, typically, we like to back right before cannon waves come because that gives us more time. The wave's less likely to move. They won't be able to roam. They won't be able to deny us minions by shoving, that kind of thing. Well, if we walk this pattern down, four is going to be a normal wave. Five is going to be a normal wave. Six is a cannon. So if you can back after clearing wave five, you have a really natural back timer, which if you start Sapphire Crystal, you will have enough money for Lost Chapter. Assuming you get... Uh, from my test, it's been 25 to 26 CS. So you do have to have uh, 25 to 26 CS at this time after wave five dies. I think the maximum amount of minions is 31. So you do have to CS pretty well. But if you go into the game knowing that like, oh, I'm just going to focus on getting the minions. I'm going to try to get as many as possible. 25, 26 and above is super easy to get. Now, there is another technique where you actually take a monocrystal and you take uh futures market in your runes it's an inspiration rune it lets you go into debt so you can actually get an extra 200 gold allowing you to back after wave four or sometimes wave three if you see us perfectly i don't like that as much because the back timer is much less smooth right you don't get to back when a cannon is coming to you you have to back at kind of an awkward time you might give a free roam as well as i don't like taking futures market in a lot of cases because i don't like taking first strike right we can see uh jet here has airy i often will go airy and then the other options in Inspiration are just too good, right? Cosmic Insight, like you pretty much just got to take that if you're taking Inspiration. And then you have Free Boots, you have Biscuits, you know, depending on the player, um, are all good options. So this is, an, this is the Sapphire start without Futures Market. You can still back on Wave 5, assuming you get 25 or 26 CS. And I love this strategy. I've been using it in my solo queue games. It's been phenomenal. A lot of times, D-Ring Star is still just better though. Because the issue with Sapphire Star is you don't have any health, you don't have any uh, AP, right? So you just do less damage, you have less resources to use to trade. So if you plan on being very interactive in the first five waves of the game, you probably don't want to start Sapphire Crystal. You're probably better off to just go Doran's Ring. However, Jet was doing a lot of Sapphire starting, and that's kind of how that works and why that works now that Lost Chapter is cheaper. So let's go ahead and start with this game. We are starting Sapphire Crystal. And yeah, we can see he's going Airy. And for his inspiration, he's going Cosmic Insight and Biscuits. I'm not a huge fan of Biscuits, but he's not going Futures Market. And one big thing I want to talk about with Victor trading is this concept of kiting backwards, right? Control Mages, they're poke heavy champions, and they always tend to go backwards after trading. They always click back, always click back. And to go backwards, it means you have to be up in the lane. So you can see how far he is. He gets his auto attack. He goes right back. Right? So he's going to Q. He's going to click to get the auto in, the empowered auto attack. And then he's going to move straight backwards. This is a concept I call mage fencing. I have another video on that. Um, but you can see every single trade he takes, he's going back. However, to buy yourself space to do that, you have to be really far up. So you can see Jet is like way up at the beginning of the minions, right? A lot of lower elo control mage players, they don't get this far up. because it's, it's scary, right? But you have so much range. You can cast your spells and you can walk away. You can always be kiting backwards. And of course, he's respecting the Yone Q3 here, which is phenomenal. He casts the laser, he clicks straight back. Every single time, it's this pattern of stepping up and then kiting backwards. Stepping up, kiting backwards. 
Here we see some very beautiful movement of us just dodging the Q3 and then walking away rather than auto attacking the Yone. And we're slow building this wave. Control mages, you know, especially Victor, are very reliant on game mechanics. So you have to have like very sharp movement. You have to have very good wave management, very good last hitting, very good auto attack spacing. These are kind of fundamental concepts that as this kind of champion, you have to be very strong with. And with this kind of wave, it's so hard for Yone to play. It's so hard for Yone to get anything. As Yone is having to use his E just to get minions at this point in the game. And it's just absolutely devastating. And we're looking to auto attack as much as we can to get value out of the Aerie. We're looking to weave in as many E's and Q's as we can. Now here... I wish we could see the CS, but Jet actually has 25 minions here. He has enough to go back and get Lost Chapter. That's the crazy part. This is wave 6. We can tell because it's the cannon, right? It's the second cannon wave of the game. This is wave 6. With his 25 CS, even before the kill, he could have gone back and gotten Lost Chapter. Crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. That's the power of that Lost Chapter trick. Also, the minion, Nico being the minion, very creative, very fortunate that Kha'Zix was still here. However, uh, the Victor was planning on backing anyways, right? Because he had his lost, lost chapter money and he had no mana. So, the only reason he stayed was because he knew the Kha'Zix was there. Right? Very, very good play. And we're going to go ahead and skip forward as he gets out of base. He buys a uh, lost chapter plus a pink. And now, we're four minutes into lane. And we have our lost chapter, so now we really get to start just throwing stuff at the Yone. Right, this wave is really big, so we let it crash. Completely just is what it is. And we're going to end up slow pushing. This is also another big trick as control mages. You need to use waves to be safe. So you typically want to slow push and keep kind of waves building and building. Like here, the wave is on our side and... If we keep it here and we slow push, we get to poke Yone easier for longer and we get to build up safety in the wave as it gets bigger and bigger. So we are just slow pushing, trying to find those poke opportunities, trying to use our lost chapter. And you can see now that this wave is building up, this wave is massive. Oh, he sees the Nico again. Oh my goodness. New Nico is obnoxious. Have you guys ran into any, like, really tricky Nico plays? I, I had a play where Nico was a pink ward on the Baron pit, and we all went to go do Baron, and she altered our team, and it was nasty. Let me know in the comments the kind of, like, worst bamboozle you've seen a uh, the, the new Nico do. And you can just see, look at how big and confident Jet can be in this minion wave. Absolutely massive wave. This is impossible to hold from the Yone's perspective. And we're creating a massive CS lead. Yone is just bleeding under his tower. Right? He has nothing to do. Nothing to get here. And we're using our W and our Qs to keep him zoned under. This spot right outside of people's tower. This is actually the scariest spot to be as a control mage. Because if you get hit by a Yone Q3, he can all in you. And you have nowhere to go for safety. Um, fortunately... Victor here is being very respectful of that. And we are able to keep Yone low enough and be safe enough in that big of a wave that we're okay. And we get the plate and look at this game. We are up just a disgusting amount of CS. We're up a, uh, a kill for the Kha'Zix. We're up a plate. So we're probably up. With the 20 CS and the assist and the plate, we're probably up two or three kills worth of gold already. Seven minutes in, in a Korean challenger game. Now here, this is a little bit tricky, but he's able to dodge the ult. I think that's a little bit of a mistake, um, trying to fight the Yone, who just came out of base, right? Yone's strong, he's got his Berserker Greaves. Uh, us, the victor, like, we don't have that much. We have a lot of gold in our inventory. We gotta go back soon. We're kind of stuck in lane here because we stayed for the plate. And we might actually end up dying for this. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, we have very good movement, but we're not quite able to stay with it. So we were just too aggressive and we were off tempo there, right? And that's that happens a lot. Uh, Jet chose to get the plate, and choosing the plate means you're going to be off tempo for a little bit. Um, oh my goodness, this Nico is very creative. She's able to... She's been tricking everybody. And now we're coming back with a Dark Seal and Tier 2 Boots, Sork Shoes. I like this buy a lot. You have a lot of mana sustain and you have a lot of AP with the Lost Chapter and the Dark Seal. And the Sork Shoes this early, since people have such low base magic resist and Sork Shoes give you flat magic pen, you're basically doing true damage with your lasers. So if you're playing for solo kills, buying early Sork Shoes is very, very, very strong. We're throwing down good ease. Trying to keep the Pantheon interested as long as possible. Again, really using this lost chapter. Making sure we're poking with our E as frequently as we can. Making it as hard as possible for Yone to get minions, to step up, to set up all-ins. All of this stuff. So now, this part of lane phase, things start to slow down as a control mage. You're... There's less opportunity to slow build waves and really be aggressive. And we're looking more to just poke when we can, but just kind of get the wave out of our face. I'm going to start skipping forward a little bit here. Because at this point in the game, the control mage is looking to just find ways that we can fight and keep snowballing our income. Right? Keep our CS high. Try to get plates. Try to be as active and aggressive as we possibly can. Of course, while balancing that with being respectful of the Nico and the Pantheon, right? It's a very scary game for Victor. You're playing into a high threat support jungle, a uh, high threat mid lane. Like everything is just kind of tricky. But we're looking for these kinds of fights where our team is ready to go and we're gonna be the, the hard hitter there. We're gonna be the damage dealer. We're gonna be the carry in these fights. And since the Kazakh and Rakan are setting up the opportunity, we're gonna be there to bring it home. That's what playing a carry champion is all about. Waiting for the opportunity given by our teammates and really executing on that. As we keep playing this out, this game is starting to get just over, right? You can see the Kha'Zix is 4-0, bot lane is really far ahead, and us as the victor, right? We're up like 40 CS at this point. We're up two plates, we have five assists. At this point, we're like, super close to having all our evolves or, or we're super like far evolved for where we're at in the game i guess we're not close to being fully evolved yet okay we tp back to lane and we are just killing uh this yone now and you can see jets opting into ludens i like ludens a lot when you have a lot of one shot potential so if you're into teams where you know you're going to be able to just kind of like take somebody out of the fight with one laser or you're going to be able to one combo somebody dead. That's when Ludens is really, really good. You can see they have a lot of squishy players. Nico, Yone is squishy right now because he doesn't really, uh, because he's so far behind, right? The Jin, the Pantheon. I like to build Landry's in a lot of my games. You know, if they do have two or three tanks, I'll find ways to mix Landry's in. But this patch, especially where you can really get ahead with the Lost Chapter, you can really snowball. Ludens is nice for snowballing and one-shotting people, which is great. And we're playing aggressive, pulling pressure mid, and we're just nuking everybody that comes here. This is so obnoxious. As control mages, we usually want to stay mid as long as possible, so we can see he's been mid this whole game, right? Oftentimes, in these high-level games, if we're playing somebody like Lissandra or Ari, somebody less control magey, we'll try to get into the side lane so we can kind of get these good, uh, these good flanks and these good 1v1s. But we don't care as Victor. We want to push mid and we want to get ready for a team fight. So you can see our team's getting ready for this bottom play. So we're hovering it with Kha'Zix. Very beautiful stuff. And at this point, it's really just a game of staying nice and calm. Hovering on our strong side, right where our team is playing at. Where the Kha'Zix is around. Nothing happens. That's okay. Not going to force it. We come right back mid. Now, I believe this is a 15 FF. Ooh, we have one more play. We TP bottom for a big fight. 
we are really far ahead, so we really want to take the fight. And we're going to trust our team to kill the Yone. We're going to run down the Jin. We get him. Beautiful stuff. When you're ahead, you want to take the fights. It's really that simple. Um, using that TP to kind of keep an eye on where our team is at. We don't want to take like coin flippy fights, but it's not a coin flip when we're so far ahead. Our Kha'Zix, our bot lane, we're so fed. So this game is like the perfect victor game, like the perfect control mage game. We lane bullied our mid laner and we kept an eye on who was winning on our team and where to take fights there, right? So we were able to take up a lot of space mid lane and we're able to spread that to our team in the fights. So. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. I hope you guys took away some stuff, maybe about the Lost Chapter tech, maybe about trading patterns as control mages in lane, maybe about team fighting and farming mid lane when you can. Um, but here, they're going to FF after like a minute or two. There must be one more fight that they lose. But yeah, you can see they end up FFing here as Jim gets picked. So I appreciate you guys checking out this video. I hope you learned something. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. Peace. By the way, huge shout out to Dominus Replay, specifically Dominus Replay Victor, which is a channel that uploads tons of high elo VODs and they have tons of accounts made for specific champions, right? So this video I actually found from the Dominus Replay uh, Victor channel. And this is how I found out that Jet was playing Victor. So huge shout out to this guy. We use his video in our video. So make sure you guys go check that out. The link will be in the description. Huge shout out to Dominus Replay.